Namaste. My name is Todd Norian and I'm the founder of Ashaya Yoga. Welcome to Asana Spotlight. Hey, take a moment and share this experience with your friends. It's one of the best ways to just bring more peace and ease and light and love to people that are in need of it. So thanks for sharing. Our pose today is Parsvottanasana. And the definition of that pose is intense side stretch pose. So the intense part comes from the word ot. So parsvot, the ott in that uh, word is actually uh, related to utt or ut, ut, which means intense. And then we've got parsvo, which is related to side or twist. So it's the you know um, intense side stretch pose. It does stretch the sides a little bit. And there is slightly a twist to get the hips to be straight in this pose. But this is an awesome pose for getting the hips, the hamstrings, and the calves to all stretch out and work together. And I wanted to read you guys uh, one of the sutras from Patanjali, who was uh, a, a yogic sage uh, almost 2,000 years ago. And he put out, you know, the Patanjali sutras are kind of like the, the first written down text that consolidated what yoga is. And in those days, yoga wasn't asana, yoga was meditation. Yoga was this union with the divine, union with the universal energy. Uh, then asana, the physical practice, came much later. Now that's what's popular. So go figure. So this is uh, Sutra 2.47, and it says, Prayatna Satilyananta Samapatibhyam. And what that means is perfection in an asana is achieved when the effort to perform it becomes effortless and the infinite being within is reached. So how do we make our effort effortless? And where is that place, that infinite state of consciousness where we feel one with all that is? And in the Tantra, which is, this is like an interpretation of Patanjali's Sutra from the Tantric perspective, which is a system of consciousness and thought that came after Patanjali. So there's a little more esotericism, a little more advanced creativity and knowledge that comes with Tantra, is that that space of infinite being is inside of us at all times because we are the physical embodiment and the expression of this infinite, expansive, vast sky of consciousness. And where do we locate it? The place in the middle, the midpoint between two opposing, opposite, contrasting uh, energies. So the place in the middle is obviously the heart. There's three chakras above, three chakras below. And we'll also go into the place in the middle where it's um, the space between two opposites. So in this pose, there's one leg forward, one leg back. So I will say scissor your legs toward the midline, and that is the front leg pulls back isometrically and the back leg pulls forward. And the goal of this pose is to learn how not to over effort because it's so easy. And who doesn't over effort in life? I mean, one of my uh, quirky traits is um, I love cleaning things, but oftentimes I will clean so hard that, that I'll rub the finish off something. Now I did get that trait from my dad, I will say because he and I used to enjoy cleaning things together. And almost always, one of us would break the darn thing that we were cleaning. But at any rate, how to find more ease. And part of what has helped me is to understand that there is this universal energy. You can call it light, you can call it the divine, you can call it grace, that is constantly supporting us. So we have to do our parts, like the winds of grace are always blowing, but you have to set the sail. So there's a place for our individual effort. And I'm telling you, sometimes people, they don't effort enough. So it comes back to the question, how badly do you want it? And, you know, with a deep connection to the longing for freedom from suffering, we bring forth our personal effort. But then we have to temper it because we can overdo it. Remember, you only have to do 50%. You only have to do your share. And then you give the rest over to grace. You release the um, expectation or the attachment to the results of the actions that you're doing. And this quality of ease and effort is you bring 
your best efforts forward you know, without overdoing it, without straining. And when you can find the place in the middle between effort on one hand and ease on the other, then your heart cracks open. And we all know why there are cracks in everything. The lyrics to that song, everything has a crack because that's how the light gets in. And you recognize your true nature, which is joy. And that's what's at the essence of that infinite being. So here's the definition again. Perfection in an asana. And don't think of asana as like a, a posture. Asana also means the seat of your being. So we could say the perfection in your life is achieved when the effort to perform it becomes effortless and the infinite being within is reached. So you ready to access your infinite being? <laughs> I hope so. I sure am. Okay, then uh, join me at the top of your mat. You're going to need two blocks for this practice. And I'll see you there in a sec. As always, I think we need to do just a little bit of stretching to get the, the legs and the hips open up. Then we'll, we'll go into it. I'm going to show several variations of the intense side stretch pose. Parsvottanasana. So come to the front of your mat, feet are parallel, hip distance apart, palms in front, and then lift your toes, hug toward the midline. Imagine a, a space right down between, straight in the center of the feet, right between the ankles, knees, thighs, and it goes all the way up and out through the top of your head. And when you bring your palms together, also squeeze your palms toward each other and try to feel and sense the space in the middle and then open to the bigger energy. Feel your hands effort, but then bring some ease. And ease is always gonna be on the wake of the breath. So breathe, as long as you're breathing, that's where your ease is. Awesome, take your thighs back, tailbone in, lift your heart, shoulders back, palate back, occiput up. From your pelvis now, root to your feet, and then inhale, Stretch up, reach high. Now practice hug into the midline with effort, but only as much effort as needed to do the pose. So even as you stretch and, and pull in toward the midline, can you find ease? Lead with your heart, exhale and fold into Uttanasana. And there's that word Ut. Uh, this is called the intense forward bend stretch. Ut. And bow. Lift your toes. Hug toward the midline and then pull your heels isometrically backwards. We want to get the calves and hamstrings and hips to all stretch and open. Inhale, heart forward halfway. Exhale, bow to the infinite being within. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, fold. Come step back into downward facing dog pose now. And <clears throat> ultimately pedal your feet. Bend the opposite knee. And then bend both knees. Turn your thighs in, lift your sitting bones way up toward the sky. Try to produce a low back curve. Then draw the tail in. Pull up from your palms, up into the heart. With minimal effort, lift your armpits up and with ease, melt the heart down. Now from your heart, push back down through your hands and root through your heels. Stretch. Really move your heels isometrically backwards to increase the stretch. The base of the shins go back. Push through the big toe ball mounds of your feet and really pull the inner edges of your feet back. That's going to stretch the inner thighs and then pull little toe to outer heel and that's going to stretch outer shins and the outer hamstrings. It does take a certain amount of effort to hold this pose, yes? All right, exhale, right foot forward into lunge. Bring your left knee down to the floor, right hand to the right leg, and twist. 
pop. And then lift your left knee off the floor. Scissor your legs toward the middle. And can you bring your hands to your hips? So you've got to really pull toward the middle. And remember, in the midline is the infinite being. So pull toward your highest self. And then stretch your arms up. Now from your pelvis, root through your feet. Push your left heel back, right shin forward. And from your pelvis, rise up, arch back. Find the place where effort and ease touch. And then go right into the place in the middle. Exhale, release. So a big part of the practice in general, but today is how to stay calm in the chaos, how to stay centered in the storm and that is a good skill to have in today's world exhale left foot forward right knee down a twist left and you know there's there's no ease without lightheartedness so relax a little enjoy the stretch take your shoulders back The practice of asana cannot be just all effort and work. You will not reach infinite being. Then you've got to ask yourself, <laughs> why are you doing asana anyway? Well, I'm doing this to impress friends and family at home. No. And then hands on the floor, come on to eagle talons, lift the right knee. Squeeze the middle now. To bring your hands to your hips, the, the only way you can do it without falling is hug the midline. So hug in, hug in, hug in. Hands to hips. Squeeze the midline. Lift your right thigh up. Outer left hip crease back and down. <clears throat> and stretch. And from your pelvis, just push your heel and your shin away from each other. And enjoy. Note the effort it takes to hold. It's there. We all feel it. Now just bring a little more ease in the form of your breath. Soften your face, soften your skin. That's it. <clears throat> and as soon as you bring ease, the pose gets a little more enjoyable. And then, I don't know if you touch infinite being with that, but certainly our chances to touch infinite being are much greater when we feel ease than when we are suffering. Okay, exhale, release. Come into plank. Thigh bones back, tail in, chaturanga. Put your knees on the floor as needed or just hold, grit it out. Thighs back, tail in. Hug strongly, hug your shoulder blades firm. Hug your elbows in, hug your legs toward the middle. And then exhale, down, point your toes. Come up, cobra, and really work. Head of the arm bones back, but let your heart be at ease and the heart is going to just simply move forward while shoulders go back we have a little bit of effort and ease right there the shoulders hug with effort the heart with ease and breathe try to find the place in the middle now where there's no trace of struggle there's no trace of effort that's what Patanjali is saying when the effort to perform it becomes effortless. And it is effortless effort because there's still effort. Exhale, but it's not over efforting. That's a really good practice. All right, push back, downward facing dog pose. Step by step, walk in. Feet parallel, root your legs into the earth and then push the earth down as you rise up. Palms up. And then exhale, release, take a few breaths, and see if you don't feel a little more warm, a little more centered. I certainly do. Okay, come to the wall. Here is the first expression of Parsvottanasana, but we're going to use the wall. So that <clears throat> usually we fold all the way down, we're going to fold halfway down. Touch the wall, bring your right foot. Uh, toward the wall. Now, if you can, uh, a little extra stretch for the toes as you curl your toes right up the wall. 
but the ball mounts are all on the floor. Now right leg forward, left leg back, <clears throat> only about three feet, don't go too much more than that. And then turn your back foot in at a strong angle of about 60 degrees. <clears throat> And we want a heel-to-heel -heel relationship, front heel, biceps, back heel. Unless your hips are really tight, you could widen that by an inch or so. <clears throat> All right, now, here's what we're gonna focus on. Square your hips to the wall. So left hip forward, right hip back. Now, start to scissor your legs with just enough effort, but not too much. Bring your arms way up on the wall, and then exhale, hinge from your hips and fold forward. The whole time, try to square the back of the sacrum parallel <clears throat> to the floor. Very good. Scissor your legs and find the infinite space located in the middle. Pull up from the right foot, both feet up into the pelvis. And we want to avoid hyperextension of the right leg, so a little micro bend. And inhale, come up. Use the wall to push against as you switch. Left toes up the wall, right foot back. Angle in 60 degrees. Square to the front. Walk your hands way up. And then scissor your legs and fold. Take a look at your left big toe ball mount. Make sure it doesn't supinate, which means it'll unground. So put a little pressure down into the left big toe ball mount. And then pull from the four corners of your foot up to your pelvis. And then work your right hip forward this time. Left hip back. Your right heel might find a little bit of air. Ultimately, we want it to go down. Uh, but don't worry if your right heel comes up. I'd rather the priorities get the hips square to the, to the front wall. Then from your pelvis, root back down through your feet. And maybe you can reach the outer edge of the right heel down. But let's, let's hold that as a goalless goal. You can get a good shoulder stretch here too. And release. Bring your feet together. All right, so that's a pose you can practice at the wall. And, you know, if you step back a little bit forward, you know, a little bit uh, from the wall. In fact, while we're just here, let's do it. Get two blocks, put them on the short, the tall end. And bring your foot about one foot away from the wall. Right foot forward, left foot back. Scissor your legs. Hold the wall for support, but you're not so close to the wall. So you can see that my foot is, uh, I'm, I'm about, you know, six or seven inches from the wall. Square your hips, squeeze your legs toward the middle, and then bring your hands down to the blocks. Now square your hips, left hip forward, right hip back. And here's a little variation, come up onto the right heel. Okay, so flex your foot off the, the toes are off the floor, and isometrically pull the heel backwards. This roots the base of the shin, much better stretch for the calf and the hamstring. Pull the tailbone in, belly in, and bow. This is where the pose gets a little intense. That's why they call it intense stretch. Forehead toward the knee. All right. Please match your effort with ease. Don't go too much into the effort. And then right foot down. Stabilize yourself on the blocks and just switch. Left foot forward, right foot back, turn in. Square your hips. Scissor your legs and bow. Come up onto the left heel and then root the heel and isometrically drag back. So a lot more effort to do that, but you know, for most people, the calves and hamstrings are so tight. We have to apply enough effort to get the muscle to open up. At the same time, breathe, bring ease, 
Check to see that you don't strain. Square your hips to the front, right hip forward, left hip back. Root the heel, isometrically drag back. Scissor your legs toward the middle. Try to touch infinite space in the midst of your suffering. And then, left foot all the way down. And that is really an awesome hamstring stretch. Now, we wanna to try to keep the, the low back in a little curve here. So, lift your shoulders, okay, and then gently round. Okay, and then step back, step your back foot forward, root your feet, come up. All right, now let's move away from the wall, and we will still keep the blocks handy. I want to show the classic pose, which has this incredible shoulder opener called Reverse Namaste. All right, so you bring your arms out to the side and then turn your arms in. It's one of the only times that we do a total inner rotation of the arms, which you know usually we do upper arm is externally rotated, lower arm is internally rotated. You know, elbow creases point straight up toward the head. But in this one, we internally rotate. And then bring the, uh, sort of the backs of your fingers together here. And then touch your fingertips and see if when you push on your fingertips, you turn in even more and move the fingertips up your back. Yet you kind of wiggle them up and then bring your palms as close as you can together. Now some people can actually touch their palms uh, I've never been able to do that. But I get fairly close, and the action here is to lift your side ribs up and take your shoulders back, elbows forward, which is really counterintuitive. But when the elbows go forward, it takes the head of the arm bones back more, and that's what enables the palms to come together more. Take some deep breaths. Now, this is really good, like the palms are... They push into the thoracic spine and they lift the heart. Okay, so if your shoulders and wrists just do not bend this way today, then the variation for you is hold your forearms just like this. And that's going to give you a ton more ease in your shoulders. Okay, so there you go. So we'll come back to that in a second. Right foot forward, left foot back. Um, as needed, bring the blocks in front, square your hips, hug in and really squeeze toward the middle so front leg goes back, back leg goes forward, hands to hips. Now hold your forearms or come into reverse namaste. Squeeze your leg strongly. Left hip forward more, right hip back more. And then arch back a little. Lift your heart. Keep your balance. You gotta squeeze your legs. Feel the earth, but squeeze your legs toward each other for balance. And then hinge from the hips, exhale. Come halfway down, go to 90 degrees. Bring your neck as an extension of your spine. You can look down, but try not to hang your head, so ears back. Now at the halfway point, squeeze your legs. A lot of effort here. Left hip forward more, right hip back. What we tend to do, because the um, hamstrings are so tight on the front leg, that it pulls the right side of the hip down. And then you've got this big angle here. So I'd like you to back up, square your hips, and as you come down, pull, uh, move your left hip forward and try to pull the right hip back more. Keep the sacrum parallel to the floor now. Okay, shoulders back and then tail in and you can round. And you just go as far as your body will allow with effort and ease. There it is. Then scissor your legs, root from your pelvis through your feet, come up with your back aligned, all the way up, step, left foot forward, ah, release your hands, do some shoulder rolls, 
switch sides. Left foot forward, right foot back. You have the blocks there, so you know you can let go of this whole thing going on with the arms to bring a little more ease. Square your hips. Okay, on this side, let's do let's just put our hands on, on the hips. Scissor the legs, find the place in the middle, and then hinge from the hip with your spine long. Scissor the legs, stay connected to the breath. And then exhale and fold hands to the blocks. Look, you can go further down, putting the blocks flat, or no blocks, come on to eagle talons. I'm gonna do no blocks. Now, scissor the legs. Find the balance between effort and ease where your heart cracks open to let the light in. And bow. On this side, I'm going to give you a, a sneak preview of another variation called Crazy Parsvottanasana. And that's where you turn the back foot, right foot, all the way in. So turn it all the way to the left and make the little toe edge of your foot parallel to the back edge of your mat. Pigeon toed, way, way in. Now scissor your legs. And try to keep your tongue inside your mouth. This is intense. Welcome it, breathe into it, and bring a little ease. And then bow. Step back downward dog pose. And let's balance that out on the right side. So step your right foot forward. Bring the left foot a little bit forward, scissor your legs. Left foot is turned in a good 60 degrees. Square your hips to the front. If you need to get back on your blocks, try that. And then left hip forward, right hip back. And then crazy, turn the left foot all the way to the right. Come on to the little toe edge. So the, the little toe edge, I call it the blade of the back foot, little toe edge, is parallel to the back edge of your mat. And now, scissor. Permission to effort like crazy. Just scissor your legs and breathe. Bring a little bit of ease to it. Yep, enjoy the stretch. Now we get not only calf and hamstring, but we get the IT band iliotibial band that runs along the outside of the leg and twist your heart a little bit more to the right and breathe. Intense side stretch. <laughs> okay, exhale, release. Go back downward dog, stretch your thigh bones back. Bend your knees, bring it all the way down to child's pose, head down. Now, all ease, no effort at all. Head down, arms in front. As you exhale, let your hips get heavy. Let your chest get heavy, head heavy. And see if for a moment here in child's pose you can touch the infinite being within. The yogic sage Patanjali is saying that is the purpose and the goal of yoga, to touch that place of perfection, which is always a balance of effort and ease, grace and effort, universal and individual. They come together to merge Then slowly release and come up. You can stay seated on your heels. Bring your palms together in front. Close your eyes. Breathe into your heart, the place in the middle, this place of infinite being that's filled with kindness, compassion, and space for all that is to be as it is. With effort and ease, we bring the best part of ourselves forward to make life better, to make this world better.
That is the essence of why we practice. To perhaps bring a little slice of heaven on earth and to relieve suffering of all forms. Surround the planet with light. May all beings come back to their heart to be in this place of infinite being, the place in the middle, where we find the balance of effort and ease, where the supremely healing energy of peace abounds because we understand the nature of the self is the same in me as it is in you. We come back to a place of oneness. When I harm myself, I harm you, and when I harm you, I harm myself. Very simple principle. Take a breath, and as one heart, one yoga, let's chant Om. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. All right. See you again soon. Peace.